Dave here, how are you? I'm going to be doing a series of videos on my solar power setup. It will range through the installation, it will range through orientation, suppliers, it will range through batteries or no batteries, it will also range through EVs, charging, all of that kind of stuff. Each one of them will have a link at the end to take you on to the next one when I get it produced. Here we go. Before I get into it, I think it's important that we discuss what kilowatts, kilowatt hours, watt and watt hours are. Your basic unit for electricity coming into your property will be watts. So it's measured at your meter by watt hours or kilowatt hours. So there's a thousand watt hours in a kilowatt hour. Let's get back to the difference between kilowatts and kilowatt hours. A kilowatt is 1000 watts of energy being used. So with my kettle, it's a 2000 watt kettle, which means it's a two kilowatt draw that it has, two kilowatts. And if I was to run that for an hour, it would use, would have used two kilowatt hours. If I ran it for five minutes, which is still a long time for an electric kettle to run, it would be one hour, which is 60 minutes, divided by 12, gives me the five minutes. So then we would divide 2000 by 12 to give me the amount of kilowatt hours, but it would be represented in watt hours. So 2000 divided by 12 is 166 repeater it would be 166 watt hours. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it adds up over time. My saw here, my, my capex for instance, is 1600 watts. So you can work out how much power it uses. I do a cut, maybe takes 30 seconds and it's minimal. But the kilowatt hour or watt hour is after the fact. That's how much I have used. Kilowatts or watts is how much an appliance will actually need to perform. I hope that explains it. Moving on, we're going to talk about my property. I am serviced by Endeavour Energy. They are the electricity supplier for this area. It's not to be confused with any of the other suppliers. Now, in my particular area of Endeavour Energy, I am allowed to have if I have a three-phase connection, I'm allowed to have 30 kilowatts of inverter and 40 kilowatts of solar panel. I'm allowed to send out 30 kilowatts of electricity to the grid. This is pretty good. If I had a single-phase connection in my particular area, I would be allowed to have 10 kilowatts of inverter and 14 kilowatts of solar panel. And I would be capped at 5 kilowatts to be sent out to the grid. Other areas within Endeavour Energy are going to have different regulations. You must have your solar installer apply. Now there are other companies called retailers, electrical retailers, and they're the people you buy the power from. So they have a deal with the supplier. For me, it's Endeavour Energy. They own the poles and wires and my retailer purchases power from them and sells it to me. The retailers will have all sorts of different structures as how they're going to charge you. And you hunt around to find the setup that will best suit your pocket. We have 28 kilowatts of panel in total. So that's normally KWP will be written after the amount of energy your panels can produce. I have 22 kilowatts of inverter, so that will be KWI after the number, the, how much inverter power I have. If the panels are producing more, it just gets wasted. On my property, I have a couple of acres and I have three buildings and I'm supplied by three phase power from the street. Each one of my buildings has solar panels on it, solar panels, solar panels on all three buildings, and each building has an inverter on it. Rather than have a dirty big three-phase inverter right beside the meter box, 
on the first building. I went with inverters on each one. So I have single phase inverters on each building. That way I can use the power directly from the roof on this building. Let's say in the garage and workshop here, I have solar panels on this roof, power is generated, DC current goes to the inverter, goes to AC current. This building draws on that power straight away. If there's not enough power coming from the solar panels or from the inverter, I will pull from the grid or from other buildings on the property that aren't consuming as much as they're producing. The same situation works for the other two buildings. If there's an oversupply that I'm creating, it gets exported to the grid. This also saved having to run a DC only supply from each building's solar panel array back up to the three phase inverter, if I had a three phase inverter. So it made much more sense rather than having voltage drop and extra expensive laying cable between each building up to the main inverter and then all the way back down to this building, losing energy as it's traveling through cables to have it was a lot smarter to go with single phase inverters on each building, use the power directly from the solar panels after it's gone through the inverter on that building to be used in the building. Simply put, less energy wasted over lengthy cable runs in both directions. Panel placement. This is a little bit of a science on its own. In the southern hemisphere, to generate the maximum amount of power over the whole day, you aim your panels due north and you tilt them above horizontal your latitude south for me in the southern hemisphere and in the northern hemisphere you will aim south towards the equator and the same thing whatever latitude north you are you will tilt your panels at that angle above horizontal i'm around 33 to 34 degrees south basically in line with sydney so my panels, the majority of them, their best performance will be 34 degrees tilting, aiming north. Now here's the interesting part. There are two more factors that come into play. Season and also whether you have high demand in the morning or high demand in the afternoon or high demand during the day. You can diversify, of course, like you can with the stock market. <laughs> You just have different portfolios everywhere. And that's what I've done. I have diversified in such a way that there are, I can aim at the sunrise direction for the winter solstice. And I can aim also towards sunrise for the summer solstice. And in between. For example, one of the buildings I have panels tilted at 45 degrees, that's the pitch on the roof, and it's aimed at east, north, east, so that's azimuth 60. North is zero, 60 degrees around is azimuth 60. So I have them all aimed at azimuth 60 on that particular building to maximize my winter sunshine collection first thing in the morning. I use power first thing in the morning for running the kettle, toaster, frying pan, anything breakfast, uh, and also around that time my hot water services kick in as well. My hot water services are heat pumps and it's cheaper for me to run off solar power than to run off off-peak power during the night. I have solar panels on my south roof for southern hemisphere that's unheard of normally, but they aim south towards the summer solstice where the sun rises azimuth 120. So that's east southeast it works it works i have a whole lot of panels facing north and then i have also panels facing west so in the evening i can pick up some power i have some hills and trees that tend to block the sun out in the afternoon that's another factor one of the reasons why i maxed out on the amount of panels that i could put on the property was to generate as much power during morning through to around about three o'clock in the afternoon where I tend to lose the sun after that. And I build up a bit of a surplus by feeding into the grid and I buy that back later on in at the night. My setup works very well for me. The panels that I've got, they're just, I'll show you some pictures. I have some panels on tilt. 
um, they're tilted up at an angle on the south side of the roof so they pick up sunshine from the north they're right down near the gutter line so they don't shadow over the other panels that are on the roof on the south lots of things like this installers here's another thing with an installer make sure they know what they're doing don't just go for the cheapest price because it's not going to be very good for you I got three quotes I got one guy didn't even come to the property he had a look on his computer and said it's going to cost you that much two more people they both came to the property the first of the other guys just had a look around I walked him around showed him the buildings I told him what I wanted he said yep not a problem I think okay now the last guy who's the one that I went with and I'll give you a link for him down the bottom in the video description he came in he opened up every box like he opened up the main meter box and then he opened up all the sub boards on all the buildings and checked all the cable sizes to make sure that the amount of power that I was going to generate did not create an electrical fire anywhere it was very important I went with the safest person I went with someone who made me feel confident I was getting correct advice it was going to be safe and I knew he was a reputable installer and he was going to be around for a long time thanks for watching if you like what I'm doing give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel click that link down there also click on double click on it and a bell icon will come up click on that and it will say notify all click yes thanks for watching see you next time bye